I'm not sure which was better. The family of eight who got up to dance in front of their seats when the theme song kicked in, or the woman who shouted, just kiss already, every time a certain two characters were in close proximity to one another. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the fifth film in the Ghostbusters franchise, 2024's supernatural comedy sequel, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content, like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire stars McKenna Grace, Paul Rudd, and Dan Aykroyd, and was directed by Gil Keenan. Set two years after Ghostbusters Afterlife, it tells the story of the Spengler family as they join forces with the original Ghostbusters to defeat an icy supernatural threat. For the 40th anniversary of the franchise, Ghostbusters comes home to New York City. It might not be the most spirited homecoming, but at least they're home. We currently live in a cinematic time that seems overrun by franchises. Now, there are still plenty of original films out there, and sequels are certainly nothing new, but nostalgia specifically has become a huge and very lucrative driver within the film industry. We've seen a surge in reboots and legacy sequels over the last decade or so, and I know people have strong opinions on the matter, including many who denounce even the mere concept of a legacy sequel. Now, it's true, we get so many of these films because their money makers that are guaranteed to draw a crowd. Some of these movies feel watered down, but I do think that at their core, many legacy sequels show a genuine appreciation and reverence for their respective franchises. In most cases, at least for an initial legacy sequel, you can tell that the filmmakers are fans, and for me, those are the worthwhile sequels. It had its issues, but Ghostbusters Afterlife was one of those types of films. A follow-up sequel to it wasn't necessary, but it was expected, and not exactly unwelcome. But like all sequels, especially legacy sequels, Frozen Empire had to contend with balancing old and new, and it really struggled with finding that balance. The supernatural premise and spooky fantasy comedy of Ghostbusters have always been a draw, but I think it's the team that has kept people engaged and coming back to the films again and again. Characters are really important, but they're one of the major sources of this film's old and new struggle. Like Afterlife, Frozen Empire sees the return of some of the old original characters. Dan Aykroyd's Ray has a bit more to do here than in the last movie, but everyone else remain little more than glorified cameos. They're enjoyable, but they're bit parts meant to drum up nostalgia. In addition to the original characters, we of course get more of the afterlife-introduced Spengler family and adjacent friends, plus a few new characters created for Frozen Empire. If that sounds like a lot of characters, it's because it is. Now, I recognize the desire to involve all of these established characters in the story, and inevitably people would complain about any absences, but Frozen Empire is overcrowded. Many characters have nothing to do. Trevor, Podcast, and Lucky are just there to occasionally be another ghost-busting body. With so many characters, the film isn't able to devote enough time to each of them, so nearly all of them end up feeling underutilized. The only partial exception is McKenna Grace's Phoebe. She remains the heart of these legacy sequels, and she's both the most interesting character as well as the only one who has anything close to a story arc here. Speaking of the story, this film is overloaded. Much like with its multitude of characters, Frozen Empire has far too many plot threads, most of which without any major significance to the overarching story. The expansion of the Ghostbusters lore is okay, and welcome. I do like the introduction of what's essentially a paranormal Q branch, and it's really refreshing to have a non-Zool and Gozer threat. There's a lot of exposition, and the payoff is extraordinarily rushed, but the paranormal bones of this story are there at least. Conflicts with Slimer and the familiar-faced mayor contribute little to the story beyond nostalgia, and the family dynamic story is not as strong or emotional as in the previous film. The story positives here all really revolve around Phoebe. There's a conflict that brings her ghost-busting future into question, which has some interesting potential, but it kind of gets buried in the chaos of the rest of the story, so it's never fully explored and ends up feeling very rushed. Additionally, there's a somewhat unique plotline featuring her and a new character. 
There are elements of this subplot that are very predictable, but the dynamic between Phoebe and this new character is pretty good. There's some very shallowly buried subtext that I wish had been addressed a bit more overtly, but it's nice to see some elements of Ghostbusters from a teen perspective. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is a film that frequently feels scattered. Story and character focus bounces around a lot, which results in some unusual pacing. This movie takes its time to get going with the core story, but then somehow feels rushed. I think it's mostly a case of too many characters and too many story threads all vying for screen time and focus. Frozen Empire is still an enjoyable movie, but it does often feel unusually serious. Not serious in the emotional way that Afterlife was, but rather just not as organically joyful as the franchise typically is. Much of the humor here feels overwritten and almost obligatory, which is a shame because there's potential for a good deal of comedy here. Just like with its melding of old and new, this film struggles to find the right tonal blend. Still, I can't say that I didn't enjoy this. It was a perfectly serviceable entry in the series and an entertaining and diverting time at the movies. This is a legacy sequel series that I suspect will continue for the time being, and I'm okay with that. I just hope that they're able to find the right balance between old and new without overloading future movies. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. The biggest pro is Phoebe Spangler. She was one of the most interesting parts of Afterlife and remains so here in the sequel. This is a movie overloaded with characters and subplots, but nearly all of the film's best story threads revolve around Phoebe. As a teenage member of the now officially reconvened Ghostbusters, she has to deal with things that none of the Ghostbusters of old ever had to. She's still figuring herself out, and this gives us a unique perspective and team dynamic. The Phoebe-centric story threads feel a bit rushed, but they do at least feel like more of a focus than any of the other plot threads. Just like in Afterlife, McKenna Grace gives a strong and defiant performance, making Phoebe an easy to like and easy to root for character. On the con side, the biggest issue is that there are just way too many characters. We've got the six new main characters from Afterlife, we've got five of the original characters returning, and then there are another four new characters that are fairly integral to the plot not including the supernatural villain. Now, the problem isn't that it's difficult to keep track of who's who. The issue is that there's just not enough time or plot in this film to dedicate to all these characters. So we end up with quite a few of them not really having much to do or much of a story purpose. Instead, we get a lot of what feel like obligatory appearances, with these characters just being there to be there. And so as a result, we see reduced focus and screen time for the characters that should actually have it. Con number two is slightly less of an issue, but is the tone. Although this is still a fun and enjoyable film at times, there's something slightly off about its tonal blend. It's oddly serious. There's still some irreverent humor with Slimer and some intentionally cracked jokes by characters throughout, but the comedy feels stiff and like an afterthought. I mean, the first two films definitely had some serious and creepy moments, but they still came across as playful and fun. And Afterlife certainly had some serious moments too, especially with the family drama, but had an emotional resonance to it. This one doesn't have anything close to that type of moving emotionality, and it feels a bit drained of playful joy as well. It's entertaining and fine, but there's just something a little off about it. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Ghostbusters Frozen Empire or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy in one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give Ghostbusters Frozen Empire three out of five paws. It's a perfectly serviceable Ghostbusters sequel. It has some problems with pacing and tone, and definitely has way too many characters, which showcases just how much it struggles with finding the right balance between old and new, but McKenna Grace continues to shine as Phoebe, and there are plenty of classic Ghostbusters elements that fans of the franchise will enjoy. I would recommend Ghostbusters Frozen Empire to franchise fans, especially those who enjoyed Afterlife. I realize that might initially seem obvious, considering that's literally the film's target audience, but that's who's gonna come away enjoying it. The nostalgia is strong here, even if the emotional aspects aren't, at least compared with its predecessor. Fans of the original film are gonna be just as mixed on this one as they were on Afterlife, and there probably won't be many people who didn't like Afterlife but really like this one unless the setting was your deciding factor, because Frozen Empire does bring things back to New York City. 
I will say though, if you're somebody who used to like the animated show, The Real Ghostbusters, there are some aspects of this film that feel more similar to that than any of the other movies have. If you liked Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, I would recommend Casper. This is another supernatural fantasy family film that focuses on a teenage girl and her relationship with her family and ghosts. There's a surprisingly similar machine featured in this film, and a few plot points that are also pretty close. If you want another supernatural tinged comedy, you might want to check out Blythe Spirit. This 1945 film features amusing ghostly hijinks after a seance enables a recently remarried man to see and hear the ghost of his late wife. This movie has some impressive practical and special effects that are still pretty cool nearly 80 years later, and it also does a good job with its tone, nicely balancing its light fantasy and dark humor. And if you don't really care about the ghosts, but like the Frozen Empire aspect of this film, you might want to check out The Day After Tomorrow. This Roland Emmerich disaster film features some more flash-frozen New York City. The supernatural elements of the story aren't there, but are instead replaced by cheesy fun, pseudoscience, and icy survival. Alright, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite movie with an icy threat? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information on this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe here at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.